let's move on to another story. Now, for the third time, President Mohamedou Buhari has declined his assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill of 2018, alleging irregularities and draft issues. Now, the rejection of the Electoral Amendment Bill, according to the senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly matters, Senator Ita Enang, was communicated to the National Assembly on August 30th. Now, this came as the president also withheld his assent on seven other bills, including the Advance Free Fraud, fraud and Other Related Offences Amendment Bill of 2018 and the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency Amendment Bill of 2017. However, the president's refusal to sign the bill drew the, drew, um, the People's Dem Democratic Party, sorry, the pan yoruba socio-political group, Annie Ferrefe, and also a coalition for the Nigerian movement and deputy chairman of the Nigerian Intervention Movement 2 and the immediate vice past president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Now, they all express fears that the president's refusal to sign the bill posed grave danger to next year's elections. Now, recall as well that President Mohamedou Buhari last week rejected to sign the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill over alleged constitutional conflicts. Now, Chukudi, this is not something new. We see this happening on a very regular basis now, and the president genuinely doesn't want to sign a lot of bills out there. Is it that this is a case of the president being difficult, or the president actually seeing fallacies and seeing flaws that the people need to know about? You see, the truth is, if we look at these issues, we can look at these issues from multiple perspectives. One, the opposition, for example, PDP, or anybody that is not in the same ship as President Mohamed Buhari. Two, as the ruling party, APC, or supporters of President Mohamed Buhari. Three, as a concerned Nigerian. If I look at this from the first perspective, I will say, oh, President Mohamed Buhari is uh, stunting our democracy. He's using his powers to undermine the legislative arm of government. That's the opposition, PDP, or those who are not in support of President Mohamed Buhari. If I look at it from the second perspective, APC or supporters of Buhari, yes, the president has done the right thing. But I'm looking at it from the perspective of the concerned Nigerian. Now, the president stated his reasons, and it was hinged on draft issues. I went through it, and if I am waiting to hear the side of the legislative arm of government, the president made valid points. You understand? He made valid points. I'm not saying that the reason why the president did not sign is because he's not also trying to protect a particular interest. But from the argument that was put forward by Senator Ita Enang, stating that this is the third time. The first time, you know, it was as a result of the rescheduling of the election that placed the presidential election last. The second time was as a result of certain mistakes and now draft issues. The president always, every time he declined assent, stated reasons. And I looked at his reasons and I said, well, they are valid. For example, one that was stated clearly. Now, if we follow through with this law, it will leave the political parties with an INEC with nine days to run around with respect to preparing for the elections, which is a major problem. But like I said, when we hear from the side of the legislative arm of government, there will be a balance. But it is important to state here, from the position of a concerned Nigerian, that the points that the president raised are indeed valid points. Now, what we must do, understanding the principle of separation of powers, is for the organs of government to discharge their responsibilities to the yeah. best of their ability to make life a lot easier for us. It's one of two things. It's either if we hear the argument from the legislative arm of government that, unfortunately, is on a long recess until September 25th, they, would, they can argue and say, this is the reason why this is like this. Or they would say, okay, let us try to see how we can harmonize the bill so that there will be no issue. Or they would want to force through using their powers. Remember that if the president declare, um, declines assent to a bill, the legislative arm of government, if they get their numbers right, can force through that particular bill. I'm very certain that Nigerians do not want another confrontation between the executive and the legislative arm of government. So we would like to hear from their own you know, point of view. But why does this keep on happening? Why do we keep on finding ourselves in a situation where irregularities are being sent forward to the president? Now, it is important that when you want to send, you know, something to the president, who is supposed to just go through and assent the signature, it is supposed to be a clean copy. A clean copy is something that you have gone through, you have assessed, you have taken out all the mistakes, you have crossed your, your, your T's and dotted your I's, and there are no mistakes. But like I said, let us hear the argument from the legislative arm of government so that we'll be able to find a balance. But from the argument that has been put forward by President Mohamed Buhari, 
you know, as expressed by Senator Ita Enang, he has valid points. And when we are discharging our responsibilities, we must ensure that, you know, we do not allow for all of this time wasting and we eliminate every form of confrontation. Because at the end of the day, we do not even benefit from all of their issues. That's an aside. Now, people have expressed worry with respect to how the president has declined assent to certain bills, like the, um, the one about the petroleum industry bill. Now, the truth is, we have a situation where certain persons are uh, uh, flexing their muscles to show that they are more powerful than the other people. But what Nigerians need to realize is, at the end of the day, you understand, sovereignty resides with the people and all the powers emanating thereof. We are the most influential and yeah. most powerful people because we validate their mandates by coming out to vote on elections. Now, what we must do to hold them responsible and accountable, as I always advocate, is by participating in the process. You do not have to be a professor of law. You don't have to, to have back the doctorate degree to be able to see that the action of certain people are not, you know, are going to put you in serious trouble. Now, what we must do is begin to follow, ask questions. Those who claim that they know, we can ask them, we can engage them in, in conversations to know and learn more so that at the end, when it's time to make a decision, we will be making informed choices. Absolutely. And just to follow up on that, apparently the parts that were rejected were sections 31, 34 and 85 amongst others. So, of course, this is still a developing story. So just very quickly before we move on to the last one, what should we expect now as the citizens going forward? Well, the truth is we are sitting down with popcorn and soft drinks watching as they are displaying. The president on the 30th of August showed his hand. This is like a game of cards. The president showed his hands. Right now, he's on general market. The legislative arm of government, I'm very sure, would maybe issue and go back and forth. But what Nigerians need to know is all this suspension, pick two, hold on, general market, is time wasting. Because at the end, when government does not focus on the very core essence of governance, yeah which is essentially advancing the interest of the citizenry. It is a waste of time. And we are quick to take sides. Hey, is President Mohamed Buhari or nothing? Hey, is these people or nothing? But you must understand that these people have a specified tenure. Yeah. And after that, they are left. Or they are left with nothing else to do. They will leave us. What we must do as Nigerians is to understand that hey, there is no four years as a Nigerian citizen or two terms as a Nigerian citizen. We are a Nigerian citizen for the long haul. And if we look at our country today, where over 60% are 30 years or below, imagine the suffering that you have to suffer from your young age or from the days of your youth till you grow old. So what we must do as young people, especially who are you know, stronger, who can go through um, 200 and something pages to learn and understand, is to become involved and begin to ask questions, to critically assess we go on our, on our, on our, on our you know, um, electronic devices and read about things happening in other parts of the world. We see videos, we listen to audio, we see pictures, and we see how people are taking a lead in trying to chart a course for the development of their great country. What is our focus? To make money, to pop champagne, to carry five fine girls, to live in luxury apartments, to, so that nothing, nothing, zero worries. Mm -hmm. But my brother, the worry is even more than one million if we don't begin to participate in building a bigger and greater Nigeria today. Wow. Well, that is actually a lot of food for thought. Let's to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.